Hello and welcome to Perry Baptist Church as we share once again in this online service. And I'm saying welcome to Perry Baptist Church. Uh, you are the, the Baptist Church of Perry at the moment because it isn't the building. The church is never meant to be the building. We look to the Bible and it never says church is the building. It's kind of a misconception we have today. The church is the people. You and I gather together as believers in the name of Jesus. We're going to celebrate the communion today. If you've not got uh, anything with you um, to eat, to drink, pause and uh, get something together and then we can continue thereafter. Let's spend a few moments in prayer. Let's pray. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we pray that as we uh, are meeting together, may there be a real sense of your peace in the midst of us. May there be a real sense that you are indeed the God who is here, keeping us each day in accordance with your promises. We are conscious that uh, one of our members, uh, Dorothy, has passed away recently and a funeral is coming up very soon. We want to pray for each member of the family every one of them, for David, uh, for the, the three daughters, for the grandchildren. We pray that each one would have that sense that you are upholding them in your loving arms, keeping them, comforting them, strengthening them, and reminding them of the wonderful Christian lady that Dorothy has always been. So we pray this in your name's sake. Amen. Amen. We say here the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever. Amen. Amen. Let's uh, pray for the Lord's blessing before we share the elements together. That, dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we pray that you would be blessed as the elements are here before us. Some of us may have bread and wine. Some of us maybe don't have that in our pantry just now. Whatever we are using, we pray that you will bless it as we eat, as we drink. Bless our lives too as we come together, conscious that here is the fellowship that's ours because of the death of the Lord Jesus Christ for us on the cross of Calvary. And so we pray this in your namesake. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, this is my body which is broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. Likewise with the wine, Jesus said this is the blood of the new covenant, take and drink in remembrance of me. And while we're meeting, for those who may be near you, may we pray for each one. May they know the real blessing of the Lord. For the loved ones who would normally be there with you but are unable due to the, 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 the virus situation, likewise we pray 
The time will come soon when we can all meet together, enjoy the company together, but above everything to be able to share something of the love of God together. Let's turn in our Bibles now to John's Gospel, chapter 3. Uh, you will recall that we were doing a series for the book of Acts and we took a break to look at this third chapter of John. And uh, so this is the second time, sorry, the third time that we looked at this third chapter of John and uh, we'll continue today. But we're going to look at the latter verses of this third chapter beginning at verse 22. After these things, Jesus and his disciples came into the land of Judea, and there he was spending time with them, baptizing. And John also was baptizing in Anon near Salem, because there was much water there, and they were coming and were being baptized. For John had not yet been thrown into prison. There arose, therefore, a discussion on the part of John's disciples with a Jew about, a pur about purification. They came to John and they said to him, Rabbi, he who was with you beyond the Jordan, to whom you have borne witness, behold, he is baptizing, and all are coming to him. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing unless it has been given him from heaven. You yourselves bear me witness that I said I am not the Christ, but I have been sent before him. He who has the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice, and so this joy of mine has been made full. He must increase, but I must decrease. May the Lord add his blessing as we come to meditate on his word together. As I said earlier, we've been looking the last two weeks, we've been looking at this third chapter of John, and we are conscious that uh, through this chapter, there is a chapter that speaks to us about the things that are important. But I would call the three musts of, of the gospel, the three musts, the three imperatives that are important for us all. And for many of us, we may look at this chapter and see it as an evangelistic chapter. We'll remember things like, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him would will not perish, but have eternal life. And yes, that is an evangelistic verse. And it does speak about the things that are important as we begin our spiritual journey of life. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. And whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Those are vital words. When we take into account uh, the other things that are said in this chapter, the must of conversion, you must be born again, you must come to that point of saying, I will trust Jesus as my Saviour, as my Lord, He is mine and I am His. That's a commitment, a real commitment. And then that second must that we talked of last time, the must of the cross. Jesus speaks of himself and he says the Son of Man must be lifted up. He's talking about him lifted up on the cross, the cross of Calvary. And he compared that to the experiences of the Israelites as they went through the, through the wilderness and as some of them were dying. So they needed to look on the brass serpent that was given of the Lord. Not because there was anything magical about that servant, but because it was about being obedient to God, to what he had to say. And just in like manner as they knew life because of that, 
So because of the cross, because Jesus has been lifted on the cross of Calvary, uh, we likewise need to look unto the cross of Jesus and in doing so, realize new life that he gives to us, ours today. But we can move on as we will do. And I want to share with you that third imperative of the gospel that's here. That third must. The must of conversion, the must of the cross, and now it's the must of consecration. John the Baptist. John the Baptist is the one who says, he, that is Jesus, he must increase, but I must decrease. And what consecration he had. Here is a man who, who once had the crowds following him. The crowds would come to the River Jordan to hear his words, to see him, and to be a part of the baptism he was doing. And now, he had none of that. No crowds following him. They just followed Jesus. And I guess for many of us, that would be a disappointment. That would be an extreme disappointment. You've been at the heights of popularity and now somebody else has taken our place. Some years ago, it was in, during my first ministry, I lived on, on an island in the Hebrides. And I remember visiting a family who lived on the other side of the island. They attended another church, uh, but uh, I got to know them as good friends. And one occasion, their father, the father of the two young children who were, now, who were still preschool age, the father of the two children was quizzing the girls to see how much they remember of the service in the church that they attended. And question after question was given and they did pretty well. And then comes this question, who was John the Baptist? Who was John the Baptist? And you know, quick as a flash, they were pretty smart girls, because quick as a flash, they came back with the reply, John the Baptist is the man who lives on the other side of the island. That minister lives on the other side of the island. The one who's got a beard. Me. Well, yeah, I'm John. I'm a Baptist. But I don't make any claim to being as it was for the original John the Baptist. What commitment he had, what consecration he had, and even went to his death, he literally lost his head, went to his death in his commitment to sharing the news of God. A man whose ministry was all about pointing towards Jesus, and Jesus alone. There was nothing about him that was of much worth, it would seem, but Jesus was the one he pointed to. That was his commitment. And in those times when perhaps we may feel, well, I, I'm not so sure that I'm John the Baptist or anywhere near John the Baptist, but God wants us to be people who are committed to him. He wants us to know what it is to be able to say, yes, here is my saviour, here is my Lord, and here is my God. And to have that full commitment that goes beyond the point of conversion into a life fully given unto him every step of the way. John the Baptist was a man who said he wasn't worthy to tie the laces of the shoes of Jesus. That's how low he considered himself. He wasn't worthy to even tie the laces of the shoes of Jesus. Once a man of popularity, once the man the crowds would follow, once the man who everybody wanted to hear, once the man who baptized so many. And now, now they follow Jesus. 
now they followed Jesus. Now he's a man in prison. And in the prison, in those latter parts of his life, he still is saying, Jesus is more worthy than me. Jesus is the one I'm pointing to. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And you know, in each of our lives today, uh, we need to come to that same measure of commitment. If you know Jesus as your Savior, if you know Jesus as your Lord, if you have acknowledged the work he's done for you upon the cross of Calvary, how he took away your sin, gave you a new life, if we acknowledge all of that, then surely we've got something worth telling to a world that's waiting to hear how they too can trust Jesus as their Saviour and Lord. To speak of a God who so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. That's the message that we have to share. And just as John the Baptist gave his life pointing to Jesus, then we likewise have a life that needs to be committed to pointing to the Son of God, the Messiah, the Christ. May we do that. May we see our lives enhanced in him, through him, and for him. Let's spend a few moments in prayer. Let's pray. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, as we come to the close of this service, we come very much aware that the life that lies ahead of us will be nothing if it's not full of our Lord. The life that lies ahead of us is nothing unless it is full of our Saviour, and that's it, it's full of our God. We pray that you will enable us, you will strengthen us as we seek to be your witnesses. And as we come back to looking through the book of Acts next time, we will see there men, women, who realized in the times of persecution and adversity, all that mattered was that they were the disciples of Jesus. All that matters for us is to be the disciples of Jesus today. So we pray this in your name's sake. Amen.